Hey guys, uh, today we're going to be doing something a little different and as you can tell by the length of the video, it's going to be a full uncut recording of me drawing a drawing, I guess. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is because uh, during the previous video about how to use reference, um, there have been a lot of discussions and questions regarding specific instances on how to use reference and maybe some misunderstanding that came across in the video and I think that's because the video was very concise and very to the point. So I think this format is a little more appropriate to just explore that subject matter a little bit more because there's just so much to talk about when using reference and applying it to art. I think that using this uncut footage will be really helpful in pointing out specific instances in which a uh, reference would have been helpful or that I use reference in a certain way to help me draw better. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize for my head wandering to the frame quite often just because I think I messed up the camera angle and it's just a bad habit of mine to you know get my head really close into the page just so I can like I guess manually zoom in so yeah that's just something that is gonna happen throughout the entire video and I just want to apologize for that Um, so here I am just sketching the drawing out in pencil just to get the rough pose and gesture down and this is not something that I normally do just because I don't normally draw this big. I tend to do it if I draw a bigger picture like this. It's like an A5 full page which is not something that I normally do and it's really easy to just get lost in the page because it's really big and lose sight of you know the proportions and the perspective and the pose when you're just tunnel visioning on getting one line down at a time when you don't have like the underdrawing sketch to sort of guide you and you're just trying to figure out as you go along so i'm just doing a pencil sketch here and then we'll go from there Okay, so before I get too ahead of myself, 
I did the uh, pencil sketch for the knight and, and I got it gathered some reference here. So the reason I wanted to draw a knight is because I bought this new silver brush pen. So it's got like, I don't know, like silver ink. And it's got like some really cool like pumpy thing on top uh, that I really wanted to try out because I thought it looked really, really cool. And so that's why I'm drawing a knight because I want to use this silver pen. But anyways, let's talk about the reference that I gathered before uh, starting the drawing. Um, so this is like a process that I usually do a lot. Um, but you know, I'm just doing it on the iPad just because um, it's easier for the video. But anyways, like I'll, I'll just gather a collage of reference pictures that I want um, to have with me or have in front of me when I'm drawing. So the first thing I look for is um, obviously night references. So uh, I gathered some research, you know, looked at Google image search, of course, and then started digging into museum archives. And that's where I found some amazing reference. So first of all, I was looking at um, some pictures of a, a knight uh, that is, uh, you know, just a regular typical uh, plate armor. And I started th thinking about like, maybe I should do something a bit more ornate so I can show the forms and like, I can make better use of the silver ink, I guess. So I looked at some reference from uh, some images from the Royal Armory, which I guess is like a collection of museums who um, collect and preserve armor. Um, I could be wrong about that, but that's my understanding of what the Royal Armories are. But in any case, there are these really amazing pieces of armor and like really detailed photographs of armor that are, I suppose, not very practical for or actually used in combat and more like ceremonial. It's very ornate and almost sculptural in a sense. And this is what I mean by in the previous video, not just looking at Google image search because there's a lot of really amazing information out there that isn't index on Google image search. So I started looking at videos for armor and articulation and I found these really cool videos of just like, I don't know, history buffs who record like how to put on a piece of armor and that just gave me a better understanding of how the armor fits together, like the pieces fit together, the mobility of like an armor because you would think that, you know, it would be very stiff and, and really hard to move in, but actually it's, it's not. And they, they're pretty mobile. They, they can do somersaults and cartwheels, uh, climb a ladder in, in a, a full suit of armor. So it's really cool just to see how the pieces move and interact with each other. And then this guy, this guy's amazing. Um, he's called Knight Aaron. He's a YouTuber who focuses on um, armor. And he has this really amazing video of the range of motion of a full piece of armor. So there's like the range of motion and he has like these measurements here just to give you an exact idea of how a piece of armor moves specifically for this one it's the arm piece so this really isn't necessarily a reference image i'm just putting it in here just for the video to illustrate the kind of references i look at other than just pictures and it's just not something that you would instinctively understand or intuit just by looking at a photograph so there's a lot of really cool stuff in here and i have like a bunch of reference pictures of knight jousting for like some medieval festival and this picture is a picture of a knight falling down but it's really cool because you don't really see this angle too much in, uh, I guess, pictures of knights or like even museum pictures. Like this really off angle. So you can see here, this is going to be really, really useful for me just to see what the inside of the arm looks like. And, you know, this exposed part of the armor and, and this part as well, just how the uh, pauldrons and the, uh, the gauntlets like uh, wrap around the form of uh, his arm. So I thought that's really cool. But I guess... Um, Let's just try to make it more interesting and designy, I guess, because just drawing a piece of armor in like a knight armor isn't so interesting to me. So I started looking at, you know, these ornate designs of inspiring me to try and do something different with them. So I started looking at flowers and then I thought about succulents because they're a lot more structural and rigid in form. And there's a lot of really cool, even like still flowery elements to a succulent, but it's kind of spiky and dangerous and and a bit more hardy and less fragile than the flower is. So I thought of looking at them and there's some really, really cool structural patterns uh, in these like uh, pictures here of succulents that I'm thinking of trying to incorporate it into the knight armor's design, basically. So that's just what I'm doing here. It's, a, it's a kind of like a mashup challenge of trying to design a knight armor, but with the visual theme of succulents in mind.
first thing we could talk about is maybe the over reliance on reference. I saw that quite a lot in the comments about people being you know, way too over reliant on reference and you know not having that reference be kind of crippling because like, I can't draw if I don't know how to draw this or how to look at that. And I think in many ways it's actually better to be over reliant on reference than not reliant on reference. I think I think it's safer to veer towards that end of the spectrum just because you know you're gonna end up drawing things more accurately. But I understand that it is something that can and will hurt you as an artist in the long run. And I think the solution to that is just being able to build the visual library. From my experience, that condition of being stuck because you don't have the reference, you can't draw it without the reference in front of you is because you're not actually retaining a lot of the information you're looking at when you look at a piece of reference. So what I mean is that, let's say if you draw a car a hundred times and every time you need a piece of reference in front of you, then that's not a very good sign because you should know how to draw a car right now because you've done it a hundred times and you've looked at the reference a hundred times. So the ability to sort of retain that memory of the reference is what is going to build the confidence so that you're not overly reliant on a piece of reference. So what it takes is actively studying something. So let's say you have a pose and you just copy it and you draw it down. That's not really referring. It's more like copying because you're not actively digesting that information and, and saving it into your brain. So one thing I do to, you know, sort of quote unquote, save it into my brain is when I'm looking at something, I'm going to try to imagine it from multiple angles. And maybe if I have more than one picture, like different angles of that thing, I would just look at it over and over again and then close it off and then try to draw that thing from different angles. Like maybe if you have a front view of a car, for instance, I'll try to draw it from the back or, or from the side just because that it helps me actively process the design and the form of it as opposed to just you know looking at the thing copying it line by line and going you know drawing what you see it's more like trying to understand what it is you're looking at and and to do that it's a very active process that you have to be engaged in and, and not just passively rely on Um, I guess another thing we can talk about is how to look for reference and what to look for in a piece of reference. 
Now, in the previous video, I talked about you know being specific in searching for your reference. So for instance, if I were to look up for reference for this one, I probably wouldn't just search knight in armor, right? I would look for ceremonial armor, for instance. You know, if I'm looking for something a bit more ornate, that would be what I would be looking for. Um, it certainly helps if you know what you want to draw ahead of time, but that's not the kind of specificity that I'm talking about. The kind of specificity I'm talking about is knowing what you want to get out of a piece of reference. Because reference isn't necessarily an umbrella term, it just doesn't mean one big thing. You need to know what you're referring to, right? So. If any of you have built a mood board, for instance, you would know what I'm talking about. You would look for reference for textures, maybe color reference, maybe mood reference. So when you're looking at a piece of the reference, you need to know, okay, what am I referring to exactly? Am I looking at the texture of the armor? Am I looking at the color? Am I looking at the mood of the lighting or the pose of the model? So there's a lot of things that you should be actively thinking about. And if you want to be even more specific, you can look at really, really small components. So you're just looking at the hand of the model and like how this hand looks at this angle when it's at this pose. So for instance, I have the reference picture of the knight uh, falling on the ground. And the angle of the arm matches the angle of my drawing uh, almost exactly. And, and I didn't know what that looked like. Um, at that angle so I had to go out and look for reference with that idea in mind like okay I want to know what this part of the armor looks like on the inside you know then I'm getting the most out of my reference and I'm not just like using it as like a general thing right I'm looking specifically for a piece of information and I'm finding it and that is solving my problem so you really have to know the issues that might come up with your design and, and just know what it is that you don't know and go out and find the information to fill those gaps. And that's basically all it is, right? It's just information. All reference is information to help you better draw whatever it is you're drawing. So it doesn't matter what form it comes in, as long as it helps you achieve whatever it is you want to achieve, then that's good enough. So it's kind of funny when people ask me, you know, is it only applicable to, you know, the stuff that you draw, like if you draw mechs and, and design stuff for concept art, is that the only place that reference is good for? And I, of course the answer is no, right? So then like, if you're drawing a portrait, then maybe you would want to study, you know, facial muscles and how they work in certain um, facial expressions, for example. And, and really, how deep you wanna go is up to you, right? Of course, the deeper and more in-depth your knowledge becomes of a certain subject matter, then the better you are at drawing it and reflecting it on the page. So here I'm just starting to do the uh, line art after having pencil sketched it in. And I had a little bit of trouble with the hand just cause um, I didn't really know which direction the sword should face as far as like a compositional thing. So I did something really weird here and I don't really know why exactly I did it, but I started drawing the line art in from the hand instead of like from the head. I guess the normal thing to do and whenever you start drawing a character would be to draw from the head. Um, but I started doing it from the hand and as a result I sort of messed it up just because the proportion was a bit off uh, because I didn't have the head or the shoulders to sort of guide me as a reference for the proportion of the hand or the arm. And so it, it kind of looks a bit weird here because of that. 
But it's also one of the parts where I wish I had more reference for or just took the time to look for it. And that is the gauntlet or the glove. I don't actually know what the underside looks like. Like I know what the gauntlet looks like from the side of like the thumb, but like from the pinky, the underside of it, I don't actually know how that looks or how it connects to the uh, forearm part of the gauntlet. So yeah, at this point, what I should have done was to, you know, pause my drawing and then go look for a reference and, and look for, you know, hmm, how does this gauntlet look from this angle? Because, you know, this isn't doing me any favors. And, and reference isn't just something that you do at the start of the drawing process. And then like, you know, this is all the information I have for my painting and nothing else. Um, you know, sometimes when you draw, it's hard to predict, you know, what could go wrong or what sort of reference you need. So. Um, you know, it's something that you're continuously searching for as you go along. And again, like how detailed you want to get is really up to you because and how much time you want to spend on a certain piece because right now I have no idea what the rivets on like the individual plates look right like. But, you know, I can make an educated guess that they look round and, you know, this drawing isn't so big that I need to draw at that level of detail. But again, like it's up to you how detailed you want to get.
Another thing I want to talk about is the whole reference is not copying thing. I think a lot of people misunderstand me when I say that reference is not copying. And the reason I say that is because the copying is not inherently bad. In fact, I think the fastest way to improve is to copy. So there's nothing inherently wrong with copy because it's not plagiarism. Plagiarism is when you copy something and then take credit for it. So let's say if you're doing a master study and you post it online and you tell people, hey, this is a master study of this painter. I don't think anyone is going to have a problem with that. But again, that's copying and that's not reference. To me, reference is when you take very specific things from the picture. Let's say it's a painting and you want to take the color scheme of it. Then to me, that's reference, right? Because you're taking an element of the picture or whatever it is, and then you're making it your own. You're finding specific things about the reference and you're using it in very specific ways and adapting it so that it fits your painting and your style. But that to me is the fundamental difference between reference and copying. Otherwise, you're just doing a study. So when I'm looking at these pictures of succulents, um, what I'm looking for is and trying to do is to boil it down into very simple graphical shapes that represent the idea of succulents. Uh, so what I'm looking for in this piece of reference is shape language and the form. So can I find something that is um, a common element between all these different succulents and then try to incorporate that pattern or shape into the armor so for me i found this like curved shape with the pointy tip like the leaves of the succulents and, and use that shape to design 
um, all the other parts of the armor so that you know it looks like it belongs to a certain theme and that it looks like you know it's the same set but for all these references um, i'm just looking for shape design and form and some sort of pattern design because again it's it's a black and white drawing so I would not be looking for color but if I were to make a painting out of it or like a color design then I would definitely want to incorporate more of that like succulent color like that blue green teal color into the armor. Okay, so let's talk about this silver brush pen for a bit. Um, don't ask me what brand or what, what pen this is because like it's all in Japanese. So I have actually no idea uh, what this pen is called. Uh, but if you do know and or happen to have one, uh, please let me know down in the comments with like 
English because I really like it and I would buy it again if I could. So the reason I picked this up was because there is this like really cool pump action on top that I really wanted to try out and I was like curious about. So basically the idea is that when there isn't enough ink in the bristles of the pen, um, you would just like hold it down and then the ink would flow into the uh, bristle. So later on in the video, you're gonna see me having trouble with like the flow of the ink. And the thing is like this ink is like super opaque and like super thick. It's like basically a paint. Uh, so what I didn't know about this to in order to like get the ink flowing, you're not supposed to like repeatedly click down on the pump. You're supposed to just hold it and the ink will flow. So I didn't know that at first. And you see like I'm like having trouble with the uh, brush pen right now. It's like not really flowing very smoothly and it's a bit dry. So I didn't know that until much later in this uh, drawing.
Yeah, so what I really like about this pen is that the ink is really opaque, like super opaque. So it's nice because I get to cover up a lot of my mistakes. Like I made a mistake with the uh, left gauntlet earlier because I just forgot to draw it in. And then this pen just like sort of covered up all the lines that I, I didn't want to be there and just like covered up my mistakes. So this is really, really nice. And then like later on when it dries up, I can go back in and like thicken all of the lines that I, I might have painted over. Another thing that surprised me about this pen is how metallic the silver ink actually is. Because like a lot of times when I buy like silver ink markers or whatever, it's just kind of like a dull grey with like a bit of a sheen on it. But this one is like actually like metallic and like more reflective than like anything I've used. Um, so it's really nice when you use it as accents to like small parts and just here and there as opposed to like just the whole character like I'm doing here. I'm just doing this just like an extreme version of that and just to learn how to properly use it and, and how to apply it and, and what situations it might be good for. But I think in this case, if it's like the whole page, then it might be a bit much, especially if you're like looking at it from the wrong angle. It's just a white glow because it's that reflective.
so here's another part that I wished I had used more reference for and that is like the application of gold trim on armor like where specifically they use gold trim because like on a lot of Arnate armors they have like different material trims and most of the time it's it's gold or just like a material that contrasts with the main metal and to me this doesn't really look um, convincing and it looks a bit off the placement of the gold or like the thickness of the trim so this is one part that i wish you know maybe next next time when i'm drawing at night i will you know, keep that in mind and, and look for reference regarding that So here I'm just giving it some shadow with uh, the grey ink brush pen and it's kind of weird because I think the ink was too wet, like the silver ink was too wet when I was applying the uh, grey shadow because it just sort of absorbs into the uh, silver ink and then just like lightens like, pretty much instantly if you see like it just dries completely invisible or almost invisible and I think it's cause it's too wet and it blends out kind of like a watercolor wet on wet method but I'm not really sure why this is happening so maybe next time I'm just gonna have to wait for the silver ink to like dry a bit more and then apply the grey ink on top and see what happens
Uh, so that's the end of the video. If you want to see more stuff like this, like more unedited, uncut footage of me uh, drawing, let me know in the comments down below. Um, if you like the video, like it, comment, subscribe, you know what to do. Okay, bye guys. Have a nice day.